Let me show you the software, what you might need as software developer. I'll cover what you need when you are just starting out, when your needs expand and when you are actually earning money from it. On the beginner level or just the first thing what you really need is some IDE. I strongly recommend you to check out, like look around, what IDE is the most common for the programming language of your choice. Simply check what professionals use, because there is a high chance that you will need the same exact thing later on if you decide for career as a software developer. So learn these things as soon as possible. My language of choice for the most things I do is C++. If my language will be C++ and my operating system Windows, I should choose what IDE? It's Visual Studio. So let me show you how to configure it. Let's go for Visual Studio. So I will just Google Visual Studio. Here is Visual Studio IDE, that's what I want. And here, download Visual Studio. And after the download, just install it. Before the installation finish, uh, you might feel urge to don't use IDE, but just some simple text editor. It might feel cooler to use a command line or whatever like that and some simple text. I strongly recommend you not to do that. You deserve better. It's not cooler, it's just slowing you down. Problem is that these easy, lightweight solutions, they by design don't contain so much tools as a full-scale IDE and you should really learn how to use these tools. When you will be more and more experienced, one of the things what you are going to do the most is debugging. And debugging is something which you really need strong support for. You can do it via command line, but it's very difficult. So don't try to choose a lightweight solution. You might think that it's easy to learn, it's easy to understand, but really invest the time to master your tool and choose the IDE, choose the tool what professionals use. There will be phase of installation when you will see something like that. We are going for C++, so here in the component selection, choose desktop development with C++. That's all you need, so click this button, it can be installed, it can be modified, depends on what stage you are. After the installation, let's run it. You can skip this for now. Choose your favorite color theme. As you can see here, the UI is a little bit skewed. It might be because I'm using a virtual machine for you, it should be all right. What I wanna do now is to check if everything works. So create new project. I'm going to choose console app. Let's say this is all right. Create, perfect. I recommend you to get familiar with the Visual Studio. Try to click around, watch what's going to happen and read the comments in the example project. They're actually quite useful. But for now, let's just hit the play button. My application is running and I can see hello world. That's the first thing what new programmers do when they're trying to work with new language. It's sort of tradition. Congratulations, very nice. We have our IDE, C++ configured, let's move on. When you become more experienced, you will need more stuff. You know, Visual Studio or some IDE is great, but sooner or later, you will need to work with files, opening files in a text editor. My favorite one is Noted++. So let's install it. Installation is pretty straightforward, as usual. And when I run it, you can see we have this cool editor with tabs. I can write something to this tab, I can create new file here. And now when I close it, and open it again, You can see that my previous tabs are still there, even when I didn't save them. Good thing what you might like to do is open uh, plugins and here search for hex. Install it. It will help you a lot. What I can do now is open plugins, hex editor and view in hex. This is very helpful. Now you can see what really is in the file represented as a hexadecimal numbers, as bytes. This is the, let's say, memory behind it. Now it depends. I like computer vision, I like computer graphics. So for me, it's crucial to have image editor as well. You might like to draw some icon for your application or just open the photos for some further analysis. So if you need to work with pictures, I would recommend Paint.net. Let's install it. You can choose whatever you want. And let me show you how it looks. That's it. 
And now we are in a phase where you are a professional developer. So what do we use in our everyday life? First, what I would recommend is to getting familiar with versioning system. If you don't know what versioning system is, uh, remember when you were writing some essay or when you were working on your thesis, it might happen that you were unsure with the new changes that you made. So you end up with a bunch of files. It was my thesis version one, version two, version three, version four, and it was plenty of them. That's one way how to do this, but we are computer scientists, so we are not going to do it that way. What will help us is versioning system. So let's install Git. This is not strictly necessary if you already have a Visual Studio, but let's do it because you can have some another idea on another operating system. I can keep everything as it is. Here I can choose my Notepad++ as a default editor. You can keep this as it is. You know, it's only for us. It's only for our local environment. We are not going to do anything crazy. Feel free to keep the defaults. Congratulations, you have your Git. You can check uh, Git bash, just how it looks. Beautiful colors, amazing. Let's close it for now and open the Visual Studio again. New project. Actually, let's do the same thing as before. Number two, that's all right. Let's run it. Mm -hmm. Everything fine. And now I can click down here. Here is add to source control. If you are using different IDE, it will be somewhere else, but it should be there. Something like that should be there. Here are some questions. You can link your own GitHub. If you don't know what are these, that's all right. Choose local only. And now seemingly nothing happened, but actually plenty of things happened in the background. Here I can open Git changes. There are already some commits. What is commit? Commit is snapshot of a history of this particular project. If I click it, I can see that there are Git attributes and Git ignore and project files. What does it mean? Now look, it shows me. In this commit, I added these files. In this, I added these files. And this happened automatically on the background of the Visual Studio. Well, what is it good for? Imagine that I want to do some change, but I'm not super sure about it. Hello world. Let's change it to hello there. You can see that even before the save, it immediately appeared here. So Git recognized that I made a change and offered me to make another snapshot, another comment. Right, let's do it. Let's say string changed. You should always choose some description, some title, which is descriptive enough for you to know what happened. Now we are already forced to fill up the credentials, as you can see. Let's do it. User, I will keep it as a default for now. And now I can commit. What happened is that on my hard drive, the snapshot has been created. I can see here that there are three commits now. Open them and see, this is mine. Open it and I can see what I did. I can see the change. Imagine that you have 30 of them and all of a sudden you find out that your program stopped to work. It doesn't work as before, you made some mistake. You can easily roll back in a history and try to find a place where it stopped to work. You can check the changes you made and they are there forever. Let's say that I found a mistake and I wanna go back to the previous version. I can do even that. Just hit right, re reset and keep changes. If I do that, I sort of rolled back and the changes are here again, prepared to be committed. I can just undo them if I want and it's going to be as before. So this is Git. If your language of choice is C++, Java, C Sharp, I would strongly recommend to master also some scripting language. I think that the very accessible one is Python. It's not bad if you install some Python environment on your computer. My favorite one is Anaconda because it contains Python and really all libraries you need. Be ready that the installation might take a while. It's just for us, just for starting. No need to think about it much. Keep default. Before the installation ends, you might ask why you need Python. We already have C++ or whatever. The point is that Python is very straightforward and fast to work with. 
if I need to prototype something very fast with a lower minimal effort, I'm going for Python. It's simply very easy to write something in Python. By easier, I mean you frequently need less number of lines. It's not necessarily the fastest choice if you are talking about runtime, but when you are prototyping, you just need to check if your solution works or such a things as you need to plot the graph of some formula just to check if the equation is valid. That's what Python is for. In C++, you need lots of setup to do the same thing. In Python, it works just out of the box. What I usually do is to think of something check if the thing works in Python, and if the thing works, I will make the real implementation in C++. Anaconda is very cool because it contains everything what you need, including very specific environment. I'm going to show you what I mean. It's called Jupyter. It runs in your browser and you don't need any specific setup for that. You don't need any idea if you just need to prototype something very fast and you can run it on anything. It really just runs in a browser. Of course, you might remember what I said in the beginning of the video. If you need something more advanced for Python, you need debugging. You can definitely go for it. Just choose some different idea. You can choose even Visual Studio. There is a component for Python development. But for my use cases, because I don't work in Python primarily, as I said, just prototyping, drawing graphs. I think in general, mostly work with mathematics. I don't need it really. Let me write Anaconda prompt. And here, Jupyter Notebook. It opens your default browser with window like that. Here you can see your folders, you can do whatever you want, create new ones. I will just create new file. Okay. And now why I said that the Python is way easier. You know, I just write print. And it works. You can also notice this cell and another cell and another cell. Uh, Jupyter has this great feature that you can divide your program to several parts and run the parts independently. So if there is some problem somewhere, you can fish for it easily. You can really see part by part if your program works or not. That would be it for the professional level. You have Git, you have Python. I believe now you have everything you need. I think we are done here. Your environment should be set up pretty nicely now. If you think that something's missing, just let me know in the comments. We can make follow-up video about it. But for now, thanks for watching and see you next time. Thank you.